I just want to uh, welcome everybody tonight. Uh, good night, uh, good evening. I'm Sheila Lyons, and uh, I am the president of the forum, uh, Wellfleet Community Forum, and we try to present um, topics of interest. Sometimes we have uh, heated uh, disagreements in the town. We try to shed uh, some light on those, on the facts of those issues and to have a safe place where we can all come and agree to disagree and hash that out and, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, do our, our civic part. So uh, I want to thank my board members, uh, John Morrissey, Jeff Tash, Dick and El Esther Elkin, Mary Fox, Tom Cole, Kurt Felix, and myself, and I think I have everyone in there. And uh, they do all of the things that I don't get to do uh, when, I'm, when I'm tied up. So I thank them. We had a great forum on housing last uh, month, and if you did not see it, it is on uh, the town website, and it is uh, really uh, very interesting. Um, tonight, we ask that we are going to be talking about parking, parking all over Wellfleet. And so if you have a question, um, we will pause for some questions, but mostly in the, in the end. And if you do, please come to a mic so that, uh, because we are being recorded. Also, um, coming up, uh, we're getting into town meeting season, and we have a board of selectmen election coming up. So we will be hosting, um, I see our moderator is here, we'll be hosting pre-town meeting uh, in the near future and also hopefully a candidate's night. So uh, with that, I just uh, want to also say I'm a member of this parking task force and it's been a great pleasure to get to know uh, my fellow board members and um, I think they've all worked very hard and uh, I want to give a lot of credit to Denny who has steered the ship and so with that, uh, he's going to introduce the rest of the board, and I'm going to hand it over to Denny O'Connell, who has been the um, chairman of the parking task force. Thank you, Sheila. Good evening. Uh, just uh, so you know, maybe a quick hands up, because there might be some people lurking in, the, in beside you that you don't appreciate, uh, our members of the committee. But our hands uh, are go to Joe Aberdale, Wayne Clough, Dale Donovan's not here tonight, Bruce Catcher, Sheila Lyons, Dan Murray, Ginny Parker, Will Sullivan, and me. Uh, so, and uh, need to recognize what great help we've had from Suzanne Thomas and Mike Hurley, and from the Harbor Master's office, represented by the other Will Sullivan tonight. So with that, uh, what, what to expect tonight, I'm going to start this presentation out and then other people will come along. The people are se seated at the, uh, at the table, but I encourage our other, other board members to pop in whenever you need to. As Sheila said, we'll take questions as the sections progress, mostly for clarification, but then we're going to open it up to questions. So f fair season when, the, when, we, when we get to the end. We have not yet prepared a report to the select board, so we will take comments in from you tonight and submissions in the near future. At the end, I will give you an email address at town hall. Let's see how we do. All right, stimulated by the tough 4th of July period of last year, of two, or now almost two years ago, 2018, nine volunteers, and we've had some good uh, help from the administration that I just mentioned. Uh, we've been meeting twice a month, and most meetings have been videotaped. I remember writing for our annual report that we met 19 times last night, last year. That's enough. Uh, we had a very broad challenge, and that caused us to focus. The town-wide, town-wide, there are about 1,150 parking spaces controlled by the town. There have been previous studies, and we quickly settled in on the experts in town. We concentrated on these three areas, the beaches, the marina, and the downtown, uh, even though we and thought that they were independent, but we were quickly made aware of the frequent crossovers. Uh, regarding, uh, regarding the beaches, we have focused at the ocean beaches, did not study other beaches. Uh, we had concerns expressed for the quality of the ponds and trying not to uh, let that issue get out of hand. And we also did not get into the bay and the harbor because we had our hands full and we don't get as many complaints. 
And then uh, really, on, on certain days in the summer, Wellfleet will always have more demand for parking than there is space. And then there are other events like parades and Oyster Fest and Porch Fest. By way of background, make sure I'm on the right slide. Uh, there's a reason we were called Parking Force the Second. We were preceded by other studies in the past. In 2009, uh, there was a Cape Cod National Seashore uh, study called Integrated Parking and Transit. 2013, there was a Beach uh, Parking Task Force One, if I can call it that. And in 2016, the, the Cape Cod Commission commissioned another stat, uh, report, and we had some other reports laying around. Part of our background was to research to see what rules and regulations exist. All of these exist on the town website. They are the beach regulations, saying basically that purchase stickers are required for ocean, bay, harbor, and pond beaches in the season. There is open parking at Mayo Beach, and there's a daily fee option at Whitecrest only. The general bylaws boil down to no parking on the streets unless there's a sign saying you can do, and also there are, there are time limits for certain areas in, in, uh, for parking. In the marina, we have time limits and we have uh, concern for parking protocol and areas reserved for certain activities. And then the zoning bylaws uh, have parking requirements for private and commercial development based on expected staff and usage. No surprise here as to what the statement is. We'll always have more people wanting to come to Wellfleet uh, than there is room at times. And as always, there will be an area for improvement, so, otherwise known as a weakness. So what did we do? Uh, town and public are very aware of the parking challenges here. We are fortunate to have many town staff who are knowledgeable and are charged with these responsibilities. In a minute, I'll show you some of the testimony we took. However, we, re view, we view ourselves as a temporary task force and trying to help the line responsible persons, not replace them. And of course, advise the select board. So. By the time we started our task force, most of the challenges of the 2018 season had passed. So we relied on various reports, hearsay, and newspaper articles. So with the help of the vigorous survey monkey, we started collecting data. These were the three major surveys from which we received very adequate response. And uh, you'll have some more explanation of this, but the ocean beaches were from taxpayers, both seasonal, year-round and seasonal, and year-round renters. As an aside, I'll tell you that we attempted to survey the transients, uh, people who come in the summer, the summer visiteds, but we got a very inadequate response, only 0.8% of the, the, the opportunity that was there. In the, at the marina, we, uh, we surveyed information from slip and mooring holders. And the merchant surveys were from the biz people who hold business licenses from the town of Wellfleet. We deemed this the best way to get uh, information about the downtown parking situation. We then decided that it would be helpful to have more information, so we developed ways to document the situation in 2019 with observations from ourselves and others. More on that later. Here's a quick listing of some of the people that we talked to. Uh, we certainly had a, a lot of input from the public, uh, and also you can recognize some of the names on, at the head of the, 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 the uh, listing here. We had a very interesting uh, session with the parking ticket hearing officer last night, um, and uh, that was revealing. But uh, there were some other things that we got into. We were fortunate to have Dan Murray be part of our, our our team, our, our what are we, task force, and he's a member of the Beachcomber staff, so we, we had the benefit of that. The challenges, as you know, parking in the summer season has always been a challenge. The potential demand has always been greater than our capacity. This is not going to change. Wellfleet is still desirable, and there, are, and there are many aspects to our challenges. I think they're self-explanatory. Uh, um, just going down, demand is always bigger. 
limited expansions available, that's a real challenge. We, we really searched to find some, some places to put cars uh, that, that would be useful for the areas where the people are headed. Uh, the marina parking lot you'll hear more about later, uh, but uh, it certainly has grown beyond what was ever intended for the marina. Um, and we, we really believe that the marina parking demand will uh, be impacted by dredging when and if, uh, I should say when. Uh, the, uh, obviously, uh, the use of a parking area is, is a function of number times time, so uh, that's, that's part of it. And some of the things that we encountered in our study, the overflow practices, uh, it's a real market for Uber and Lyft and the taxis. And uh, so people park downtown or they park at the pier and get a ride over to the ocean side. Another thing that we encountered that uh, people were not really aware of, but there, there are several bus deliveries that occur to Cahoon Hollow. So starting with the ocean side, I think most, most of you know this, but uh, town parking for ocean is maintained at these four locations. Each seems to have its own attributes, otherwise known as personalities, and its own patrons, and it does vary year by year. Shuttle buses run between Whitecrest and Cahoon Hollow, and uh, from here to here, and these are, have been uh, set up by the beachcomber who leased the town-owned parking area at Cahoon Hollow. But we thought a quick aerial tour would be revealing. Uh, the ownership of our lots is of interest. Oh, didn't work. Probably. The ownership is of interest. And uh, I'll just point out the parking area, sometimes hard to see, but here, here you go right here. Um, and, and in this and the, and the next three slides, the color code is green is Cape Cod National Seashore and blue is town owned. At Newcomb Hollow, which seems to be the most popular beach and most desirable parking area, most of the land is owned by the town. But as you can see, there is some where our parking goes on to Cape Cod National Seashore. At Cahoon Hollow, the town owns the shorefront, shown in blue, in front of the beachcomber. That's the, that's the beachcomber building right there. Uh, and the beachcomber owns the orange section, and then the Cape Cod National Seashore is again green. The town lot, lot is all sand and is leased to the beachcomber who controls this lot, but sticker parking is allowed if there is space. The parking space is now, uh, the, the parking area now extends roughly 50 feet, 50 feet from the front of the beachcomber to the dune's edge. Kind of hard to see in some of these pictures, but the dune's edge is right along here. The existing parking area at Whitecrest can be seen under the blue shaded areas on both sides of Ocean View Drive. The lot on the east by the beach is used for beach permit parking. The lot on the west is used for daily fee, daily fee parking paid by credit card and debit card. No more cash. A proposal of a couple of years ago was to expand the area to the west of the current western lot. So oh, right, right in through here. We'll come back to that. At McGuire Landing, also known as LeCount, uh, we, we learned ocean, ocean Beach names here. The town owns only the road layout, and if you look hard enough, you will observe that the, some of the parking area and the toilets are already on Cape Cod National Seashore land. It may be possible to squeeze in some more parking area along the southeast side of the road near the southwest end, right through here and I emphasize May, uh, by changing the parallel parking into head-on parking and expanding south into, uh, into the road layout. It would take some pretty careful planning, but it's something that can be done uh, and after careful consideration. And it's private property beyond that, so hard to, hard to uh, do much about that. One more geographic fa fact before we leave the ocean side. 
Oceanside erosion rates are three plus feet per year, uh, but can vary considerably year by year. In the center of the red circle is a narrow point between the road surface and the dune edge. Um, and it's only about 65 feet away in, uh, I don't know how many years, but I have in my notes 15 to 20 years, uh, people will, will be getting nervous as the dune edge approaches to the road surface. But also note that the Cape Cod National Seashore has all the land on the landward side of Ocean View Drive. So there's, there's great concern on how to recover from a break in this road. But the reason to point this out is that the current shuttle service runs between Whitecrest and Cahoon Hollow. No road, no shuttle service. Leading the question of why do we do more parking at Whitecrest? Just thought I'd locate that for you so you understand where it is. Uh, and you, you know where it is probably. Uh, you'll see some more data later, but uh, the parking pressure is really to the north and not to the south. So, so uh, the fact that the, the, the heavily used beaches at Cahoon and Newcomb would not be accessible from a bus, a bus service through the current Ocean View Drive. So Ocean, View par Ocean Beach parking observations. Uh, the town has expansion capacity only at Whitecrest uh, and maybe at McGuire. Town-owned lots are into the Cape Cod National Seashore land. Town-owned town lots are owned by the National Seashore and the erosion rate is, is pretty evident and uh, so there is concern for the Ocean View Drive. So now I'd like to turn it over to Bruce who's next on the agenda here. Stay there? I can, or where? I'll go up here. You want me to push or you want to push? I'll push. Okay. Thanks. Hi, everybody. So, um, you know, one perspective I've had from the beginning on this is this is a good thing. Not that we have a parking problem, but the idea is there's so many people who love this wonderful town of ours and want to come here that that's why we have this issue. Um, it would be worse if there was plenty of parking because nobody wanted to come here. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, the other thing is that, um, uh, you know, I've been doing surveys for a long time, and uh, perception is reality. So what we did is we surveyed residents and non-residents. Uh, there were... Uh, uh, about their experiences at the four uh, different ocean, ocean beaches. And there were 3,500 surveys uh, that were sent out with tax bills and online. And uh, we got back uh, 908, 26%, which is pretty good. Pretty good for this kind of a study. And uh, uh, some of you will be wondering, well, what's the statistical significance of these results? This is not a sample survey, it's a population survey. We surveyed everybody. So any number you see is a real difference, um, just so you know that. Okay, so of the people who responded, 42% were residents, 58 non-residents, uh, year-round renters, uh, not too many. Okay, so the main question we asked is, overall, I'm satisfied overall with the availability of parking at the ocean beaches. And the results are sort of mixed. 30% say yes. 27% no, 43% are mixed. I mean, when we did this, we didn't know when we started. We didn't know, are 90% unhappy? Is it 100% unhappy? So it's sort of mixed. People are mixed about it. Um, and if you look further into the results, and we have a lot of data here, um, um, some of the areas where people are the most concerned, uh, well, the lowest, the least concerned is the people who go to LeCount most often. Um, and uh, the people, of course, who are the most concerned are people who um, are turned away uh, often when they go to the beaches. They're the most concerned, which makes sense. Okay, so what, what beaches do you go to? Four times or more, we, we asked uh, how often you go, four times or more. This is, again, this is not last year, it's 2018. Um, uh, Newcomb, 83%, you could see, uh, and Cahoon, 43 So the most is Newcomb. 
those are the people, uh, including my family, that's where we like to go there. They're all nice, but we like to go there. Uh, the time where uh, most people go is between 10 and 3. 18% uh, go before 10, 14% go after 3. 55% uh, is a little more than half go at low tide. High tide, it's 8%. A lot of people, it doesn't matter. So when you went there, how often was it full? So the parking lot was full several or many times at my first choice beach, 56% of the time. So more than half the time. Uh, at my second choice beach, it was 41% that it was several or many times that, that um, the parking lot was full. So what do you do when the parking lot is full? 50% uh, went to the Bay or Pond, 41 went to another ocean beach, uh, 38 went, waited online, 24 said, that's it, not going to the beach today, and 2% um, used a car service. Uh, this was to get to another beach. Okay. So regarding the shuttle, we wanted to find out, is the shuttle the answer? Um, if we had more shuttles, if we uh, were, went to all the beaches, would that help? So this is again now 2018, 59% were aware of the shuttle, so many people weren't aware of it. These are taxpayers, residents and non-residents. Uh, only 7% used it. And well, what if we um, went, had a shuttle that went to all the beaches? Would you use it? It was free. 16% say they would use it. And uh, if there was a small fee, only 10%. So it's not a big answer. It's not like everybody, and, and, and I can understand that personally. I got all my stuff I'm schlepping. Do I want to get on a bus and go, you know, some people travel light, some people don't mind. Um, some people have a, a smaller footprint than I do. Um, so, okay. Um, so one thing that a lot of people liked is the idea, if we could do this, of uh, and there's been some exploration already on this, is if we had a way to, for you to get on your device, hopefully an app that works better than the ones in Iowa, and um, configure out what, you know, that would tell you what beaches are full and what aren't full, or how long the wait line was, if we can figure out how to do that, 59% said they would do that, okay? And that's good, because most of the people who responded to this survey weren't millennials, but still 59% they, say they would do that. Okay, we had, there was a place for open-ended comments. Uh, there were uh, 523 comments from 139 people. The most frequent ones are here. Uh, they'd like reserve parking for us taxpayers. We should have special privileges. Um, and 49% said something about, uh, and Wayne, you correct me because you looked at this data. 49% said uh, uh, something about the shuttle. 25 were positive and 24 were negative. Um, 36 people said uh, no more parking, they didn't want any more parking, and 34 said, yeah, we need more parking, and 24 people had comments about the sharks. Now, you should know, despite the sharks, you probably know this, the, hmm, the number of parking stickers has been pretty much the same for the last few years. So, us well Felicians or Felicians, we're too tough for those sharks. Okay. So just uh, some uh, general conclusions on this survey. There were a number of surveys, but this was of the resident and non-resident resident taxpayers. As I said to begin, to begin with, uh, there's mixed satisfaction. 43% uh, are partly satisfied, partly dissatisfied. 30% are satisfied, 27% are dissatisfied. Uh, there's a high frequency of full lots during the peak hours, the peak demand. So we figured it's about half the time people encounter this. And uh, the preferred times people like to go were 10 to 3. Newcomb is the number one. That was 89% or 83% that wanted to go then. Shuttles would be mixed in use. It wouldn't get a big amount of use if we uh, increase that. Uh, people like the idea of having internet updates. And uh, so that's, that's the basics of that. So now I'm going to turn it over to Wayne. Yes. Okay. Sure. Go to the mic. <laughs> you, you mentioned the uh, number of uh, parking relative to. Uh, oh, it's on. You mentioned the number of parking stickers. Uh, I forget exactly when we had the fee increases, 
did, did that have an effect on the number of parking? I, th uh, I think Wayne will get into that, John. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. All right. So, so those of you should know that anybody who wants to ask a question, we're going to say, we're going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this way? Sure. I'm going to block it even more. Further? Are you okay? Yeah. Back, back, back. All right, you want me to duck down? <laughs> I'm going to try to do two things at one time, use the button and talk, so I may have to turn this over to you, though, Denny. Oh, yeah, there I am. Okay. All right, this is, this is new information as of this week, actually. You uh, skipped one. Did I? Yeah. Jeez, bad news. Huh? Done. Oh, that was the first one. Okay. I think. Yep. Oh, all right, sorry. Well, we can go to the second one. You're right. Okay, you asked the question about parking permit sales. There's the answer. Uh, the average, it's been running between 12,750, and this year was just shy of 13,500, our peak year being 2016. Uh, impact, some, obviously, in some cases, the economy in the earlier years, but uh, it's fairly steady number, and the revenues have been fairly constant, actually increasing because of the increase in fees. Uh, associated with the parking that uh, we're paying both on the sticker side and on the daily rates. <clears throat> Any questions on that? The average is roughly uh, just shy of 13,500 stickers. The type of stickers does change from year to year, and if you're interested, we have all that data. Uh, but uh, in general, it's, it's, it, the total number and volume is pretty much the same. Now I go back. Okay. This is new information as of this week. We were always questioning to how many spaces we have lost. Uh, we've assumed, based on what's been, what's been uh, known internally around town, the thought was over unknown period of time, we've probably lost 250 spaces. Uh, using a source called Google Earth, Danny and I were able to capable of going back as far as 1995 to 2018, which is a period of 23 years, and determine precise, not precise, but very close to how many spaces have been lost. The total number has, is about 150 spaces in that well, time. The committee uses cutting edge technology. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> it's quite amazing technology, actually. Uh, and it was free, too. That was even better. Uh, the, the largest loss, obviously, was at uh, Newcomb Hollow over the years. The uh, smallest has been Whitecrest. Nothing has been lost there. All we've lost over the years there is, if you look at the earlier uh, uh, on all the beaches, if you look at the earlier aerials, the, the, the slope to the sea was much greater. Now it's just straight. So what you were losing is dune, but not parking. Now, in most cases, we'll lose parking if anything else is lost. Um, <clears throat> I think that was it. In the, I can go through the whole, I won't go through the whole terminology, but the average sort of, sort of surprised us. Different, differed quite a bit from beach to beach. It was a low of 2.6 feet for a Cajon and a high of uh, 5.7 feet loss per year at uh, Newcomb. I think it was one year that we lost the bulk of that was there was one big storm that really took it out, and that one takes a hit because it's a lower dune. So if the eyes come in, it, it gets more of a more of a hit than the others. Any questions on this slide? Okay. Okay. How full did the parking lots get? Uh, by use of uh, the staff at the various uh, ocean beaches, we kept track of every day in the summer how often they, what time they filled, and how often they filled. Cahoon Hollow was the most, 60 days out of a 78-day season. And that overall, the, during the summer, there was only three days the uh, tenants weren't there due to weather, fog, or um, rain. <clears throat> Secondarily was the Newcombs Hollow, uh, which we expect, and that's, as uh, was alluded to before, uh, people don't want that to change. They don't mind waiting in line, and we'll have a, have a slide about that a little later. Uh, White Crest was only 12 days this summer it filled up. And the attendants tell, told me, we were trying to get it to keep, find out when they filled up, when they uh, opened up again, filled up again, but it's just too hard to keep track of. But the attendants told me in most days it didn't stay full for more than 30 minutes. And then it would open up again, then maybe it closed again, but usually it wasn't a long period of time. The one that really surprised us was, was McGuire's this year. McGuire is only one day it filled up this year. And uh, Whitecrest, pretty much those 12 days were Saturdays and uh, some f and the holiday, the holiday week, four days, and the Saturdays. Sundays, not very rarely filled up. 
It would get full, but not totally full. Uh, and that's primarily, we, 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 I attribute that to a lot of people just don't want to drive home on Sunday in the traffic. So they, they focus on Friday, Saturday visits to the beach and leave early. Um, the other thing we monitored you, with the help of uh, the police department, Mike Hurley and, and his staff, including uh, Mark um, Spiegel, who we, we call the uh, parking ambassador of Ocean View Drive. He does a phenomenal job at it. Uh, we monitored how many buses come every day. Uh, commercial vehicles. A bus, a commercial vehicle can be a, a full-size tour bus, which is like 55 people. I think we had one or two of those this season. Typically, they're school buses, which is anywhere from 40 to 45. Push the button. Excuse me? Push the button. Oh, sorry. See, I told you I couldn't do things, do things at once. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, Saturdays, Sundays. Sat Sundays were very light. Actually, I don't think I think it was only one Sunday that we had to keep track. There weren't that many buses. Uh, the busiest day was 4th of July, or 6th of July, the Saturday of the July 4th week, and that was 31 vehicles. Now, this varies in size. Some are full size, some are like the minivans, and some are actually just you know, like a black limo. We have the statistics on that, but basically it was 31 vehicles they had to monitor. And it was all done very well because they've gone to the system now where you have a slotting time to arrive and you have a slotting time to leave. Um, total passengers during that time frame we recorded were close to 3,000, which is an average of 210 per day, and uh, we have roughly 31 vehicles on, uh, not 31, but um, at yeah, 210 vehicles. Um, we cannot stop the commercial vehicles as much as we'd like to, or not, I guess we don't really like to after we studied it. Uh, it's a public road, we cannot do it. Um, the seashore can do it because they own their roads. Um, and the other thing we cannot, I've tried one year and it didn't work and subsequently the insurance company for the town said we shouldn't charge for walk-ins. It's hard to monitor uh, and in addition it's an insurance liability you might be incurring by charging a parking fee. What we can, I mean a walk-in fee. What we can do and which we're working on for next year, Suzanne's working on, is charging for the buses and uh, we hope to generate some revenue there to offset our costs of uh, operating the uh, police department staff as well as uh, the trash removal. Where do they come from? Um, this is a, the top 10 of the 29 commercial vehicles starting points uh, last summer. Uh, as you can see, they're mainly you know, lower, mid cape and, up, and uh, outer cape. Um, one, one, one uh, thing we dispelled was there was, everyone thought there was what they call line services, which is where a, a bus company will say, hey, we'll pick you up at, you know, we'll, anyone who wants to come will pick up at exit six at 11 p.m., 11 a.m. in the morning. No one does that. It's all pre-charted. Many of these charters have been going for 20 plus years, family events, uh, college reunions, that type of thing. And the two, there's two major companies, Cape um, Destinations and uh, Funk Bus slash Cape Cod Taxi, that do the lion's share of the business. And we're working with them to uh, add further controls next year. And they have their own regulations uh, on the buses as far as maintaining uh, <laughs> Peace on the bus. I mean, if you if you have an issue there, you'll never get back on. And if you aren't there when you're supposed to be picked up, they don't wait. Find a way home. That's that's uh, to sort of alleviate the traffic. There are benefits to continuing the commercial vehicles. One is it reduces the number of spaces we need. As we saw, there's 3,000 people. If you assume 3,000. Three people per car, roughly, it's a thousand cars we don't have to park, and those, that's many more parking spaces available for those that do have stickers. Is, as uh, we'll hear later, I think Suzanne's, I don't know if you're going to talk to this today or if you want to talk to this, but she, as I mentioned, she's working with the bus company to develop a prepaid system so there will be some significant re revenue generated by the buses. Um, part of Mark Spiegel's uh, job when he, a bus arrives is he gets on the bus before everyone uh, disembarks, explains the rules of the beaches and that type of thing, and the rules of drop off and picks up, pick up, and it just educates them on various safety issues regarding sharks and other things. So it's a very beneficial opportunity to educate people. Uh, and it does keep those that tend to consume more beverages off the road at the end of the day. Um, but as of now, it's no town revenue from it, but we hope that will change uh, very soon. Um, well, we were, had the benefit of 
one of our members uh, quite frequently goes to Newcomb Hollow Beach, and he monitored his wait times for the entire summer. So of the 78 days, he went 29 days. There were 13 lines only 13 times, which is 45% of the time, and that was usually on the weekends. His shortest, longest wait was 90 minutes, God bless, 90 minutes. <laughs> and his shortest wait was 10 minutes, and the average wait time there is uh, 36 minutes. Uh, again, I don't think there's a, it, it, would, it would not be well received to try to eliminate the wait line there. So a shuttle, that's another reason a shuttle wouldn't work, because you'd have to eliminate it to allow the buses to go up and down. The recommendations for the beaches. Continue the data collection that we did this year, both at the Go beach. Oop, done. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, continue the daily collection of the beach information by the attendants, uh, as well as um, continue the daily fee use at uh, the new system at the daily fees. And that it actually generated more revenue this year, and um, I think it was far simpler. Um, I think as next year, Suzanne's going to be adding, um, in addition to, it's going to be what, swipe? No, no, uh, changing the technology so it's, improving. yeah, it's improving the technology so it's easier to use them. Chip readers, I guess, is what's being added. Um, and they want, we, we strongly suggest, as we did earlier, the uh, development of an online system, real-time system. People really want that. It was 59% wanted that, and you have to figure, it's probably greater than that because a lot of the people that go in the early in the morning or late in the afternoon wouldn't use it, and they probably responded no. Uh, and uh, we want to continue the management and commercial of the commercial vehicles by the police, have a reservation system, and uh, pursue, continue to pursue the parking arrangements for the buses after they uh, unload. Um, we also recommended continuing um, the continual use of the town lot uh, by the beachcomber and their payment of a, a amount. Yep. Got it. I got it. All right. Here. Well, I'm done now. <laughs> uh, adding, we're, we want the town to consider adding park in at the Mayo Beach grassy area, particularly when after the, uh, in, in anticipation of the, the, uh, the uh, yeah, the dredging of the project. Can't think of that. <clears throat> uh, we also want a study of future parking needs, especially in relation to the harbor and uh, the possible loss of access, as we mentioned, to Ocean View Drive. And we strongly connect, uh, suggest con contact the Cape Cod Commission again, as well as um, uh, perhaps an outside consultant to look at this. We're, we're all not engineers, and it, it does take something, there's someone to take a look at the overall town and see how well uh, a new system might be devised to improve the parking and meet the needs of um, our town better. Any questions? I gotta get a drink of water. My stick. My lips are sticky. You said the wait time at Cahoon's was 90 minutes? It's, no, well, that was one day he waited 90 minutes. Where do they wait? Newcomb. Oh, sorry, Newcomb. Newcomb. Newcomb, wrong name. Yeah. Newcomb Hall, sorry. Where do they wait? Right, well, it, it, right in the line there. There's a place that they can... You mean on the road? On the road, yeah. yeah. So, so that is a problem. It's... Uh, how do you see it as a problem? I guess it's... Well, a, because cars go back and forth there, and they park up, and I know because that's where I live. Yeah, right, so, all right. Well, yeah, it is... The it's, road's narrow there. Yes, it Yeah, is. but I think we're told that most of the people are uh, courtesy, of not blocking driveways, that type of thing, when they're waiting. But you could tell us better since you live there. But, well, yeah. Right. It is, it is a problem for those that are residents in that area, but it would be a bigger problem if we tried to do a shuttle because you'd have to remove it. I agree. And I guess got to say the police do a great job of moving the cars along. Right. And the, and the attendant there, everyone loves. Uh, she does a great job of keeping in track of uh, what's available and, and keep, trying to keep people happy. Um, there are certain people that are always disturbed by that. Sure. Um, just just okay. to further on, on that wait time, um, there was a just you know conversation about that, and I felt that people really did not want to wait, and that this was something that we had to address, and that it was becoming because I go to Newcomb Hollow too, and I remember about 15 years ago you never had a line, now there are these lines, and um, when we did ask that survey, most people were like, well, we'll wait, mm -hmm. you know, I mean we we know that that's what we do, and that's what we do, and they you know come prepared with a book or what have you, but. Most people accept it, and you know they're adaptable. So right. I, I was proven wrong on that. And 
I mean, there Bill was some. Was proven right. <laughs> there was com some commentary in in the uh, survey comments about allowing that other beaches, but it's just more very much of a safety issue there. Um, so this is the only beach we recommend continuing to do that. Next is I'm really going to do this right this time. Right. Joe. <laughs> Another question? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Good luck. <laughs> I, um, I, I think you said that 60 days out of the year, Cahoon Hollow was uh, um, closed. Well, right. full. Capacity. Reach capacity. When, reach when capacity. we say filled, we mean it at one time during the day it filled. Right. We didn't get statistics of how long it stays filled. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Um, you're talking about both parking lots, the private new one, the private one, as well as the yeah, right. Because what typically happens now is the front lot is reserved, and correct me if I'm wrong, Suzanne, uh, reserved for residents in the morning. And if it doesn't fill up, and the other lot does fill up, they do let you know daily parkers park there. Wait a minute, you're you're at Whitecrest. He's asking about <sighs> Cahoon Hollow. Newcombs, I'm no, sorry. Cahoon. Cahoon Hollow. Cahoon Hollow. All right. Yeah. Go ahead again. Where, where the beachcomber is. Uh, yes. Right. Two, okay. There's two parking lots, and you said. Are you referring to both of them because it's the same management? Right, now? yes, it's always okay. one. Yeah, the, the, the front one lot fills up very quickly, and yeah. the second one is the one that's privately held by the, by okay. the beachcomber. Correct. Thanks. And, they, and they, they do a very good job of uh, working with the town to open the lot first or earlier than the 9 o'clock anticipated time. They've sometimes, we kept track of when they opened, sometimes as early as 7.30 or 8 a.m. in order to get the traffic off the street. <clears throat> And if anyone's interested in what backs up this information, we can bury you with <laughs> data. <laughs> As you may have seen on our e e uh, videos. <clears throat> Good evening. All those who hold a lease for a marina slip or mooring, when the leases went out last year, our survey went out with them. We had a return of 218, a 51% response. 178 of them were pleasure craft and 22 were commercial. One of the questions, how often do you use your boat? 50% of the pleasure craft owners use them one to two days per week, and a third use them three to five days per week. The commercial people who submitted responses averaged three days a week or more. One question. Have you always found the space? The pleasure craft owners at 58%, the commercial 60%. How long do you park? Pleasure craft people three to four hours, the commercial five plus hours. There was a section on the survey for written comments and 49 people responded. The top five comments were a request for dedicated parking for boaters and commercial fishery, fishing people. Um, five people said it was fine the way it is. Um, people, four people commented that the marina staff is very supportive. And three had a plea for dredging as soon as possible. Based on the survey and much discussion, the resulting recommendations were utilize a consultant to increase spaces as much as possible, um, be very cautious on um, new parking needs, um, address commercial fishing parking needs, um, move the beach permit office to free up spaces for parking, and to enhance the parking signage. So there's new parking needs that might be if there is a, a new exhibit or a new restaurant or some other, uh, some other 
a commercial business that is going to depend on parking at the marina? The marina currently has provision for 430 pleasure and commercial boat slips and moorings. Slip fees range from $1,200 to $2,200. The mooring fee is $219 plus $700 for the equipment rental fee. There's a total of 301 parking spaces, including 10 handicap spaces. 60 of those spaces are designated for trailer parking as required by the state. The marina parking area has been used as the town's municipal parking lot and has served as an overflow parking area for the town center and commercial street businesses. In addition to boaters parking, there is a lot of usage by patrons and employees of area restaurants, galleries, theater, lodging, shellfish department, beach permit office, commercial fisheries, deliveries, marina walkers, and wedding attenders, attendees. We have a truly eclectic crowd from bride and grooms to boat owners to fishermen to square dancers. The Boaters Marina Parking Survey revealed that most boaters did not have a problem finding parking during this past season. This is attributed to the extensive limitations placed on boaters' ability to leave and re-enter the harbor due to a lack of dredging. It is anticipated that the demand for boater parking will increase a great deal when dredging is accomplished, as the usage of boats will increase with the ability to use the harbor at any time. The Marina Enterprise Fund meets the needs of virtually all of the marina's operating expenses. In order to continue to maintain the marina's required financial income without major funding by the town, adequate parking has to be provided for boaters after dredging is completed. Given that the marina parking area has served the town as a municipal lot for area businesses and the public, and with the anticipated increased demand for boaters parking, possible solutions need to be addressed. We believe this matter is best addressed as part of a master parking townwide plan to attempt to meet various parking needs. It appears that those developing a parking plan will certainly need to consider the possibility of a new extension parking area utilizing a shuttle bus operation. It is recommended that the select board begin work to develop a plan for the allocation of marina parking spaces. It is also recommended that the services of professionals with this type of planning skills be utilized by the town. Thank you. I might just comment that uh, we also observed uh, many Uber people headed towards the ocean side who are parking at the, at the town pier. So it's, it's really a collection point. So it's a nice big one, or it was. So with that, Sheila, I think you're up. Yes, please do. Okay. Um, couple things. This is uh, Helen Wilson. This is my second dredging cycle in 20 years. And yes, there will be more boats coming in the harbor recreationally when we get dredged again. But there won't be more than there used to be the last time we were dredged. We have the same number of restaurants down there, okay? No, I just did it in my head. Hold not, on. The, not the same seating capacity. That, yeah, slight change. But what we do have more of are people, there are more people in the shellfishing industry than there were 20 years ago. And I'm glad that one of you, I forget which, mentioned the fact that 
that the place that's designated and accepted by the state during Vibrio season, which is the better part of the busiest season at the marina, that is the only place where people can transfer their, what they've harvested to trucks. And they're trucks, typically. They're pretty big trucks. They're not semi-trailers. but So they're there, too. And they need to be taken into account. And I just have to say that I'm not sure that we need more parking spaces there. I think we need better consideration of the use of the area during the most congested season, which got brought up in your presentation. The other thing I want to say is, you understand that filled-in wetland, which includes Bakersfield, is a sponge. Already a huge amount of it compared to what was there in the first place when the first spoils were put on there. A whole lot of it has been paved. And my line now is every land use decision we make has to relate to climate change and sea level rise. So to advise us to pave over more of anything there should be considered in relation to that. There are ways to pave that are porous, you know, it's that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, when, when we mentioned the, uh, the, the okay, grassy area, we weren't suggesting pavement, but it needs to be a good decision mm -hmm. when it gets made. The harbor was last dredged in 2002. At that time, only what we call area one, the slip area, was dredged. Area two, the big mooring area going toward Chipman's Cove, was not dredged. This time, it is going to be. So all of those boaters out in the mooring area are going to be using their boats a good deal more because now they are going to have access and not mud. That's why we anticipate quite an increase in demand of boaters to utilize those spaces that are already there, not increased. The, the, the point is that they'll be out on the water longer and so their cars will be there longer. So there'll be less parking. I think one uh, one point that got overlooked on one of the slides was one of the other recommendations we're making is that they uh, consider moving the parking office off-site, and I think Suzanne is looking into that right now, because any given morning, there's, uh, what, 20, 30 people waiting there for beach uh, fire permits, and any morning or afternoon, depending on what's the changeover day, people are waiting there to get stickers. So that could free up another 50 to 100 spaces, depending upon the day. Yes. I'd let Suzanne recommend uh, address that, but I, I believe that's in place. It's it's a, it's a, available now for town residents. Right. Right. Uh, we started, <clears throat> excuse me, online sales last year for residents and uh, homeowners. Uh, it's impractical to do visitors online because. Even when in person, they don't bring what they're supposed to bring, and then we send them back to their cars, and it's, it's a process. So uh, we will be live. This is an opportunity. Uh, live March 1st of this year uh, for online sales. Beach stickers came in today. My happiest delivery of the entire calendar year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the beach stickers are in my office. Well, we'll be using them soon. Okay, so uh, we also did a merchant survey. We sent out uh, 170 um, surveys to, to the 170 merchants that we identified. We got 40 back, which I thought was, I thought we would get a little bit more, so that was 50%. No, excuse me, it was not 50%. Of that, of that, tw of that 40, 20 were retail, which is 50%. Hospitality businesses were 13. Service businesses, um, how did we uh, do that? Like um, insurance or something like that uh, is under that category. Only one of uh, that category responded, and five, what would be other? And they, we basically focused on the downtown uh, Main Street area, the town pier, Route 6, and... Um, 
other, which was really did not have an impact. Most, as Denny said, most of this is up, uh, is North, North Wellfleet. So um, zoning permits require parking. Uh, so when a, per when a business um, establishes itself, it does, in the zoning uh, requirements, regulations, there is, they should have a certain number or anticipate a certain number of parking area. 14% uh, 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 or 14 people out of the 40 said that they, they did have that and they, they had the parking they required. Uh, nine said that they did not and 17 didn't know that they had those regulations to abide by. So that is something that uh, maybe the zoning board should uh, impress upon people as, we, as they go forward. And we know that parking is gonna be an issue. Uh, on-site on -site parking is adequate. Uh, that was the question. Is it adequate? 24% uh, agreed. Eight or 24 people. 60% agreed. 20% disagreed. Out of 40 people, and um, 10 had mixed, and and 10 had no opinion at all. Did they find that it was difficult to find parking? And 35% uh, agreed. Push the button. Pardon me. Agreed that there was. Um, uh, 14, re 14 felt that there was uh, difficult, that it was difficult to find parking. 12, as you can see there and yourself, that it was mixed. And 14, uh, so it's half and half, some agreed, some didn't, that there was a, any problem at all. If their employees had reserved parking, would they use it uh, if it was within five minutes? And we were thinking there have been businesses that have rented out the church spaces and that sort of thing, if we were able to provide something like that. 26% um, said yes, that would be great. If it was five to 10 um, minutes, 6% said yes, that they would even go along with that. There, what was the average time of a visitor, a customer in their shop? Most uh, reported that it was 30 uh, minutes or less. Um, those that, 17 of the 40, First of all, First of all. 14, out of the out of 39 people who responded to this, 17 felt that it was 60 minutes or more. So we're assuming those were the hospitality business, and the average, you know, most people said it was 30 to 60 minutes, other than the hospitality. And when is parking often a problem? Uh, during the weekdays, it's from 10 to 2, or 2 to 5. On the weekends, it's 10 to 2. Uh, nine, the majority felt it was 2 to 5, and it's split uh, after 5 from 4. Four people felt that it was more after 5, uh, and 5 people felt it that on the weekend. Um, how many people favored parking in the central district? So the question paid, was... Paid is parking. For paid parking. So um, if we put the meter system in that you park, you put your, you know, you pay somewhere over this remote place instead of having meters along the way, maybe that would turn over business so that there were more customers coming in. Was that the feeling of merchants? Not really. 10% uh, um, said that, that they would accept that and that might be a good idea. Six were sort of mixed on it and 23 disagreed. They did not feel that there was a need to uh, have downtown uh, parking or metered parking. Um, the comments were no paid parking. Parking is okay. Concern for the work, they do have concern for workforce parking. Um, they did consider a town shuttle. They would use that if there was a remote place for employees to park and there was a shuttle coming back and forth into town. Um, Others may, uh, others using my parking. I didn't understand that. It's poachers. poachers. Oh, poachers coming in and using their parking. That was a comment and a consideration of some. And uh, ZBA ignoring parking regulations when establishing new businesses. So I guess our recommendations are no paid parking at this time. There doesn't seem to be a need for it. Um, the town gets glutted when it's a rainy day. Uh, that's when people would probably want to have more turnover because it's maybe the same people there, people trying to get to the market, and they can't because it's a rainy day. But they are the exception. Um, they, they did say to enforce the limit times that are in place. There is a two-hour parking limit, and that is done by chalk, and then there's different things coming up that um, 
you know, in another time we can have a discussion on that, but that is usually how it is done. Um, try to control new businesses for needs. These are recommendations that we'll be giving to the selectmen. Um, for parking needs, when you're a new business is coming on, it really is something to uh, consider and how is it going to be met. Explore reserve parking for workers and um, people really did not want satellite parking in shuttles. So there are, are you gonna take this part? Yeah, okay, because there are places that we have seen, but it would take more exploration. And the other thing I did wanna say about the marina, uh, just to, to make a comment to go back to that, um, that increase of cars will also be paying marina fees, so there's gonna have to be a whole weighing of, imbalancing of, of all of these different businesses between the restaurants, the marina, which is really the marina, is there for, these, for this purpose, and uh, shell fishing needs and et cetera, but it'll be interesting times. Okay, thank you. Well, as you've heard, uh, part of the challenges are finding a place to put the cars. And uh, we did a little bit of work around to see where the town owns property. And is it feasible to use those as satellites or just more remote and make people walk a lot? Uh, we, uh, we quickly ran out of places to, to park cars. Uh, the town owns the 190 West Main Street, which is the lot right next to the uh, DPW building. Uh, it's completely treed over. I talked with the assessor, and uh, it seems like we have a little bit of a cloudy title there, so that's, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, and also, uh, that's not the best walking street as you go down West Main and all that, so uh, it's not really appealing. And then you can go out further and get less appealing, um, and that's the old sand pit out there, or one of the sand pits. Um, and, and there, I know the DPW really relies on that as a, as a storage facility. So uh, there, there are challenges in the downtown area. We looked elsewhere. And, and uh, I'll come back to this sort of subject in a minute. So there are some other comments that we did. I mean, we can't, can't go along without uh, talking about enforcement. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we had a very interesting session with the parking ticket, ticket officer the other night. Uh, but uh, when we have parking tickets in the town of Wellfleet, a majority of those tickets are related to the beach activities and are issued by the beach staff. Uh, the, the, there are some time limit issues, uh, but not many. Uh, but one of the, another thing that we learned was that uh, it's getting harder and harder to keep get, issuing tickets towards the end of the summer as the staff disappears. So, And then we also had comments about u using private parking, and, and uh, that is something that the town can work on if they want to try, but it's private parking. So coming back and, and wrapping up here, I'll try to wrap up quickly. Uh, consolidated recommendations. We do need to work with the Cape Cod National Seashore for our ocean beach parking, for, for Ocean View Drive. We do need to know what we're, we're dealing with. Uh, we, we had a s significant challenge by looking for data that, that Wayne mostly collected and uh, we learned an awful lot about parking habits and all that sort of stuff. Uh, in, in my view, and I think the, the committee, additional parking at Whitecrest is not urgent. I don't know how to say that politely, but uh, it's, it's just, sorry? Okay, thank you. Uh, the, uh, but we should continue the shuttle that's there uh, between Whitecrest and Cahoon Hollow the all Ocean View Drive shuttle wouldn't be used. And uh, uh, we also think that the idea of the commercial vehicles increasing usage of our beach has been a good thing. Let's see. Push the right button. Uh, consolidated again, just marina parking. We need some help down there. Uh, it's going to be a real... Real challenge, uh, certainly, if there's more activity down there. 
and over and over again, we keep coming back to the let's let's think parking. Let's let's uh, whenever we create some new activity, uh, we we need to think about the parking requirements that come from that. And we do have the move the beach permit office. Sorry, uh, me, that that's something that needs to be studied too, and uh, hopefully we can find a good solution for it because it sure be nice to, in essence, get a new center for parking that is needed and is away from the area. Going back to downtown, uh, no downtown parking, uh, paid parking um, needs to be done. I think that's a real feasibility issue. Uh, uh, it's cost a, probably a lot more to do than, to, than what you get out of it. The idea would be that you try to force some more turnover and therefore artificially create more parking. Parking t time limits need to be um, uh, enforced. Again, we talk about being cautious about new parking needs. Uh, certainly managing the summer staff, uh, both at the beach and in the police department, towards the end of the year gets to be a challenge. Uh, and uh, so their, their business is uh, not being enforced as much as it could be. And then uh, we mentioned the grassy area at Mayo Beach. So. Just kind of bringing it all home here. Uh, first recommendation is rely on the staff. We're paying them. They, they're, good, they're good people and they know what they're doing, so we certainly that, did that. Another recommendation for the town is if you see a parking area, buy it. <laughs> uh, but but uh, it's, that's a challenge. And then uh, just generally think parking. And uh, so with that, uh, we're open for comments. Uh, we. Uh, we do have our email area, and we will be coming to the selectmen, so your two bits is worth it, and look for it. Please. Hi, Denny. I, I saved all my questions for last. Go Thank good. you. Um, so they're not in any kind of order, but um, it's, it's a burning thing here. Who is our park hearing parking ticket person? Her name is uh, uh, Jennifer Kane, and she's the assistant town assessor. Um, she's got a heck. She's, she's got a heck of a job. And oh. We need to support her. Great. Um, and um, ha was there any negative feedback? I guess this is a question from Suzanne on the uh, credit card use at uh, Whitecrest. Our biggest problem was with connectivity. Uh, even though it's advertised as 4G, I don't think we had 4Gs till maybe July 23rd. Um, <laughs> And it went up and down. Uh, we now have like a satellite that can contact Mars, a dish up there. <laughs> so I think this summer will be much smoother. What, one thing that didn't come out about Suzanne's switch to uh, credit card, debit card. Can you imagine the cash that some of the people had to take home with oh, them each night? Well, I, just... I, and I, when, when she came to the select board, I mean, that was the big concern is that these were young kids. Uh, you know, at these parking areas with an enormous amount of cash um, and, and nobody to really hand it off to. So, yeah. Um, what do we think a, a, a bus could generate with regard to revenue? Is there any ballpark figure on, on what we might be able to charge a bus going into the future? Are you talking downtown or are you talking um, along a the beaches? shuttle bus for the beaches. Okay. I don't think a shuttle bus is a good idea because most, anecdotally, I... You know I mean, what can we charge a bus that's dropping people off? Oh, charge a bus of docking people off. Right now I'm in negotiation with Cape <coughs> Destinations and Cape Cab uh, to park at the uh, Wolfley Elementary School on Saturdays and Sundays, and they have each agreed to uh, compensate the school committee, because it is school property, $5,000 each for the summer. And the other occasional bus is uh, fifty dollars a day. Great. Um, last, any consideration for the property that's abutting here? We've talked about that, and, and uh, certainly there. Are, well, such things are temporary, unfortunately. But uh, but but when you have a parking area, what are you going to do with the people who park there? Do you need to run a whole shuttle bus? in order to take them to wherever they're going? Do you need to set up a whole circuit? It, 
whenever we talk about remote parking or satellite parking, leads to another question. Leads to another question. And it's a real challenge. I think we, we ought to be thinking about it. We ought to be looking at it. But don't jump until you really know where you're going. Um, last but not least, great job, guys. Thank you for all this work. It's been, uh, it's been uh, a, a lot of data collecting and uh, an eye-opener, really. It, it has been a real eye-opener. I'll speak for myself because some people don't call themselves slow learners. Uh, it's been a real learning curve for me. So, so I, I want to thank you guys for all the work you did. And Ginny's here, right? And Dan. And um, Will. Will. Yeah. So uh, the other people that were on the committee, everyone worked really hard. I'm sorry you had 19 meetings in one year. <laughs> and I thought it was only going to be go on for like six months, maybe 10 months, and you've gone on for? 18. 18. That's because we're slow learners. <laughs> yeah, no. No, the research, so this is all the information that you're hearing, but there's so much more research. Uh, that they didn't present, such as looking into every kind of, uh, every feasible kind of uh, product to charge for parking. You know, how coming into the marina, how would you set it up? Would you do gates? Would you do tickets? You know, a lot of research there. The gathering of information from the survey and collating it was a huge amount that everyone participated in. What else am I missing? And just all, oh. all the mechanics of it, yep. you know? Yeah, we, we, we um, plan at our next meeting to determine how much of this data we will put on the Parking Task Force website. So a minimum, minimal amount of it's there, and some of it, the, for those of you who've been watching our meetings, are glued to the TV watching our meetings weekly. <laughs> um, surprisingly, we were, we, were, we were really surprised for a couple of few weeks there, we were getting like 1,200 people. Yeah. We don't know if it was the same person 1,200 times or whether, <laughs> but it, <laughs> Yeah, but it, it dramatically dropped as we started repeating ourselves in the end. But uh, it, it, it was a, a rewarding for me, and I can't tell you, I can't give uh, Denny enough accolades for how he kept us steered in the right direction. And yeah. uh, as you do watch our meetings, sometimes we took, have tends to get off course, and he, he brings us right back in. But the amount of hours, particularly to this PowerPoint, I've been helping a little bit with it, but it, it, it's... Uh, it's time consuming just to figure out what to put in it. I mean, we could, we could be here for three hours if we included everything. So. Yeah. We, no, we will put this PowerPoint on, on the town website, so it'll be available for access. Yeah. And, there's, and, there's, and we have information about the parking revenues over the years, the, anything you're interested in that backs us up. Um, we even have the point of, you know, the, when we, were, we originally when we started to keep track of the parking on the Ocean View Drive, we started keeping track of uh, weather, tides, um, and, and, and other things, days, and, yeah. and temperature and humidity, thinking that might make a difference, but it doesn't. It's just basically, is the sun out, and do I like to go, you know, with the, with the high tide or low tide, and that's about it. And uh, wait, some, some like to wait in line and read their New York Times. Right. Wow. And, and if you are going, if you're asking when to go, obviously it's before 10 o'clock and after 3 o'clock, and go, don't go on the weekends. Um, so if you're a resident and you want to use the stickers, your stickers, you're more likely to get it beginning of, uh, any Monday to Friday. Well, well another, again, I another, just want to thank another, you guys for another all the interesting work. tidbit, if I can. We had a great session with the National Seashore uh, people. Uh, and uh, it was very interesting that uh, a lot of the ideas, that they, they work in a different environment than we do law-wise and all that. But... They don't fill, fill up the Marconi Beach lot all that much. Uh, and I forget, $20 a day or something yeah, like that? Yeah, they're 20, we're 30, right? We're the only one, it's only two towns on the Cape that are 30. How many spaces is that? They have over 300. 600, is it? 600. And they, and they allow walk-ins, too, so. Right, or free if you're a Freedom Pass holder or whatever it is. But they, they can allow walk-ins because they don't have the insurance problem. You can't sue the federal government. Vic. Um, technology change often takes us by surprise. Think back 12 years ago when nobody was walking around with a supercomputer in their hand. Um, I think within five years, half of all new cars sold will be electric. Maybe more, maybe sooner. Some predictions are it'll start in three years. What about getting electricity to all these parking lots? For, because the beach is a normal, a natural place. You're gonna park your car, 
you've driven 60 or 80 miles, maybe 100 miles. Now your car's going to sit there for four hours. Well, we're, we're an advisory thought, task force. Talk to the, the beach administrator. Yeah. Well, I've given a thought to getting enough electricity to all the parking lots to handle the need, let alone putting up um, okay. the actual. One, one of the suggestions. Solar yeah, one of the suggestions. Uh, there's power there. It's it, not where it's generated. But there's presently, t you know, behind the town hall, it's two the chargers. There was consideration given to the marina area. The select board asked the marina committee to do a study. We recommended that they not be placed there because we've had several washovers over the entire blacktop in wintertime and when concerned about the power issue in water. Okay, but what about Whitecrest Beach? It, uh, one one, one uh, individual did not send in any comments, but he actually sent us a full architectural plan of how to redo Whitecrest Beach uh, as far as parking and different lots for different types and having the access from the rear, not off the road, and closing the road during the summer. And one of his suggestions also was a picnic area and putting in carport covers that would have solar on top of them. So that... I'm sure it's something we can consider in the future, but it's not cheap. You'd probably have to have someone subsidize it. Yes, sir. Again, I, I want to thank you for guys for all the work that you did. It's certainly a, a challenge. But just to go back and look at the beach parking piece again, uh, I think what I'm taking away from this meeting, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're all agreed that beach parking can be a challenge but we're doing the best that we can do and there's really no specific recommendation or even well, the, even floating the idea of bringing in a consultant to take a look at that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at well, Cahoon okay. Hollow being closed or filled 60 days out of the year and Newcomb being filled, was it 38? 38. 38. And Whitecrest, I mean, I would think if the there's, shuttle is working at Cahoon Hollow from Whitecrest. Well, that... You, there are all sorts of conflicting things here, John. The, the, the idea, number one, you get variability in weather, uh, and you have variability in the beach attributes. All of those lead to the parking at the beach. Uh, you also have, lest I say it, uh, declining revenues around Cape Cod associated with sharks and other things. We don't think it bothered the, the revenue that much. We tried to understand that and see if there were any obvious trends or anything like that. One of the things that the seashore did study some of the shark issue, and I don't know if Suzanne did too, I'm sure. But it was interesting. One of the statistics that came back is that something on the order of 85% of the people who go to the beach don't go above their knees. So, you know, there might have been an impact, but not a big one. Uh, the other thing, and, and I'll take it downtown too, seasons change. Two years ago, downtown had the farmer's market, had the bookstore, uh, not the bookstore, the lighthouse uh, and all that. And so there was a lot bigger demand for parking down there. Um, and, and so there were, uh, you know, more times when things were filled. It's still a mess uh, in, the, in the heaviest days of the summer. But... The fact is that it was not as bad this year as it was in previous years. And, and very anecdotally, I'll, I'll admit it, I would always pay attention downtown when I'd go through and purposefully take a couple detours to see if I could find parking spaces. I always did. No, I, I, I understand. I'm, my, my concern, I mean, I understand the marina situation. I certainly understand the library situation. But getting back to the Ocean Beach piece, well, my understanding was that it was an unacceptable situation. But that's not what I'm hearing from you guys. Uh, well, the, we, had, we had a big incident over the 4th of July period of 2018 uh, when a lot of buses showed up. There was a lot of trash. There wasn't the kind of controls. The police department has done a marvelous job of trying to control that situation out at Whitecrest and at, at uh, Cahoon Hollow. And, and it's been effective. Uh, and, uh, but you gotta keep in mind, we didn't get any revenue out of any of that. 
There's a, there's a great volume of people going there, as you know. There's a great volume of commercial and regular traffic going there. It took a village to resolve those issues. And that village was the police department, the beach department, and the beachcomber management. And they've worked beautifully together. And none of them have any complaints at this point, and we have not received any complaints. So they keep the traffic moving, they keep the buses moving, uh, the flow of people down to the beach and coming up and leaving at the end of the day, we think at this point is very impressive. And safety. Yeah, safety is. Thank you. Yep. If I can just add on to that, um, we did consider, since there was a shuttle, would would we have this shuttle sort of make a loop? Is there a place where you could have satellite parking, um, maybe even have revenue you pay there, that's your whole fee of the parking. Um, you could have, not just this, I didn't know about that design at Whitecrest, I think that should be passed on. But, um, but that type of thing, if we had a satellite that there could be a picnic area or a full um, uh, bathing, you know, uh, a place where you could go to the bathroom, maybe take a shower, or change your clothes, that sort of thing. Um, where would you put that and how would people get it? But it was, if you were going to do it for all of the beaches, getting down to Newcomb Hollow, if most of us have always been, have gone there, just walking that road, it's very steep, it has a very sharp curve, um, it's very narrow. So, and people will be parked there waiting to get in. So if you had a shuttle, it's just not conceivably safe to do it. So it, and the response from most people were like, we adapt. We have adapted to the times, we have adapted to, we know what the situation is, so we change our, our schedule to go that way. My, I do feel that downtown, and I do think that one of the reasons of 2018, we had extremely hot couple of weeks so there were people on the beach that did not want to leave, and people wanted to get onto the beach. I was one of them. And um, so it really has not been that bad last year. It will have those seasons, as Denny said. And when downtown, if it starts to become a booming downtown, that's when you're going to have the boards are going to have to consider a turnover of maybe metered parking there. Um, and they're going to have to think of those things, of the shared uh, experience of the marina, of all of the different uses of the of the restaurants, of shell fishing, of the boaters, um, they all they're all paying customers, and um, they all are, expect to be able to you know pull right in. So that's going to be the challenge really for the board of selectmen grappling with that in the next several years because it will definitely you know be something that will come up again. Well, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Well, we have to write a report to the select board, <laughs> and and yeah, well, we're we're still open for business, so to speak, but uh, you know, and we're, we're going to talk about that amongst our committee. Right. But obviously, filing this this document will answer a lot of questions. So. Well, no, well Helen, uh, I, Helen, I, my, my attitude is maybe one page on top of this. Uh, here it is. And it's, I guess we're making a short presentation to the select board also, but maybe with the recommendations that might need money right away, like the consultant. So between now and that time, if you have thoughts, uh, comments, um, they're welcome. That's why we did this before we went to the board of selectmen with sort of like, these are our recommendations, and everyone's like, you didn't think of this. This is an opportunity to do that, and anyone who's watching, they can get on that, that um, email, that website there, and make your comments, and we'll bring those forward, right? You'll find us on the town website. So. All right. Okay. Thank you.